endometrial carcinoma, pelvic lymph adenectomies, controversies, and updates. Prior to the mid-1980s, a retroperitoneal systematic or complete, which includes pelvic and paraortic lymph node dissection or lymph adenectomy, was not performed. But, in 1987, a landmark study by Kriesman et al. was done. The Gynecologic Oncology Group 33 study better defined the factors that increase the risk of lymph node metastasis. This showed an increased risk for pelvic lymph node metastasis in endometrial carcinomas that were more deeply invasive into the myometrium and of higher histological grade. And so, a complete lymph node dissection was considered to be a reasonable approach to the management of all endometrial carcinomas. Then, the paradigm of routine complete lymph node dissection was shifted with the publication of two randomized controlled trials. They showed that the complete lymph node dissection did not improve survival in patients with early stage endometrial carcinoma. One of these trials was the ASTIC trial, which included 1,408 patients, all with clinical stage 1 or 2 endometrial carcinoma, either assigned to a systematic pelvic lymph node dissection or removal of lymph nodes only if suspicious and at discretion of the surgeon. And after 37 months of median follow-up, it was found that there was no difference in overall survival between the two groups. Therefore, many started to question the place of lymph node dissection in all endometrial carcinomas. Well-designed studies to clarify some of the findings of these randomized control trials have not been done. And there remain gaps in the data regarding the role of lymph node dissection in endometrial carcinoma. This brings us to four questions. Why should we do pelvic lymph node dissection? In endometrial carcinoma? Which nodes should be dissected? How should it be done? What are the possible approaches? And then when is it indicated? Endometrial carcinoma is surgically staged and the standard procedure is a total hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. The revised 2017 figure staging includes lymph node involvement and, if present, changes the staging of endometrial carcinoma to stage 3C. As mentioned before, the presence of lymph node involvement will affect the stage and also the prognosis of endometrial carcinoma. Other prognostic factors in endometrial carcinoma include histopathological subtype, molecular factors that are present, age, race, and positive peritoneal cytology. The table shows the five-year overall survival percentage for stage 3C1 and 3C2 endometrial carcinoma which is respectively 58.3% and 51.2%. Furthermore, the presence of lymph node metastases determines whether radiotherapy is indicated and to what level the radiation may be given. The paradigm of shifting towards doing a lymph node dissection was also supported initially by a study in 1995 by Kilgore et al. The study showed an increased survival with multiple side lymph node dissection in the high and low risk group of the study. But this was however not a randomized control trial. Subsequently, trials like the ASTIC trial have shown no improvement in survival rates when a lymph node dissection is being done. The second question that needs to be answered is which lymph nodes should be removed when a lymph node dissection is being done? 
The lymph drainage of the uterus occurs through the parametrium to the pelvic sidewall, to the obturator, internal and external iliac lymph nodes. Further drainage from the pelvic sidewall is to the common iliac and then the paraortic lymph nodes. Alternative drainage from the fundus may occur along the ovarian vessels directly to the higher paraortic lymph nodes. In a study by Jobo et al., it was found that in endometrial carcinoma, the major route of metastatic spread is via the obturator nodes or internal iliac nodes, with or without parametrial involvement, and rarely directly through a paraortic node pathway. This leads to the paraortic lymph node dissection controversy. There is conflicting data. Some studies show an increased survival when it is done for stage 3C endometrial carcinoma patients. But the role and benefit is less clear in patients who often have major comorbidities, which increase the risk of complications from an extended lymph node dissection. Identification of patients at a lower risk for metastases has led to many omitting this when the risk is predicted to be lower than the risk of the procedure to remove the lymph nodes. In practice, pelvic lymph node dissection and a selective paraortic lymph node dissection is done based on the feasibility of completing this safely. The next question is what are the possible approaches of lymph node dissection? The possible approaches are doing no lymph node dissection at all, doing a routine complete lymph node dissection, or doing a selective lymph node dissection based on a few options. Preoperative evaluation, frozen section, palpation of lymph nodes intraoperatively, or using sentinel node evaluation method. The argument for not doing a lymph node dissection could be based on the data that most endometrial carcinomas, about 70%, are diagnosed as stage 1 and more than 80% are of an endometroid histology. This is in developed countries. But in a local study done at the University of Pretoria, it was found that only 43% of the endometrial carcinomas are diagnosed as stage 1 and 62% has an endometroid histology. Possible evidence for supporting the decision not to do a lymph node dissection could be based on the ASTEC trial, as mentioned before, with findings which showed no benefit for early stage endometrial carcinoma, or the SEER database, which is the US National Cancer Institute Surveilling Epidemiology and End Result database, which showed that the five years relative survival for patients without lymph node dissection was 98%, compared to 96% in those undergoing a lymph node dissection, thus suggesting no discernible benefit. But without the lymph node information, the surgeon must rely on neutrine factors to estimate the probability for nodal disease and recurrence, in order to determine the need for post-op radiation. This could lead to the increased use of radiotherapy and overtreatment of patients. Interestingly, omitting the lymph node dissection may lead to a poorer prognosis. For instance, in the PORTEC trial, a subset of 99 patients with stage 1C but grade 3 endometrial carcinoma who did not have lymph node dissection and who were treated with radiotherapy post-op was found to have a poorer 5-year survival than those with stage 3C endometrial carcinoma managed with lymph node dissection and then radiotherapy. Routine complete lymph node dissection will provide the most information about the extent of the malignancy and is advised in high risk endometrial carcinoma. But the concerns are high intraoperative morbidity and the effect of lower limb lymphedema and associated cellulitis. There are different factors associated with lymphedema in lymph node dissection, like obesity, the use of radiotherapy, and a higher age. 
and this risk of lymphedema varies widely from 5 to 38 percent. Another approach is selective lymph node dissection. First of all, based on risk determined preoperatively, the Mayo criteria can be used. It involves three criteria endometrial carcinoma with grade 1 or 2 endometroid histology, tumor size equal to or less than 2 cm, and 50% or less myometrial invasion, clinically or on frozen section. If all three criteria are met, the risk of lymph node metastasis is less than 1%, and the patient is at low risk. Therefore, a lymph node dissection can be safely omitted. The next option is selective lymph node dissection using intraoperative frozen section. Fresh tissue from the tumor is collected by the surgeon and given to the technologist on standby in theater. The tissue is then processed by freezing with an aerosol spray and inserted into a cryostat machine for sectioning. The sections are cut and picked up on a glass slide. When ready, the slides are stained and then ready for the pathologist to examine them microscopically. If the frozen section shows high risk features like high grade histology, deep myometrial involvement, lymphovascular space invasion, or cervical involvement, the pathologist informs the surgeon who then proceeds to do a lymph node dissection. Intraoperative frozen section has been shown to be useful in some studies. A significantly higher accuracy for determining the histological grade and myometrial invasion than a preoperative evaluation was found in a recent study done in 2019 by Hiruharu et al. Of note, in the Mayo Clinic study that determined the Mayo criteria, the frozen section was very reliable with 89% accuracy. But, in most centers, frozen section is not available or as accurate, and there are many pitfalls, such as the need for available and trained technologists, pathologists, equipment, and also the result may differ from the final histology report. The literature on the use and benefit of intraoperative frozen section in low-risk endometrial carcinoma is inconclusive. Selective lymph node dissection based on palpation, or the so-called cherry-picking method, is proven to be inaccurate, as only 10% of patients with lymph node metastasis will have grossly enlarged lymph nodes, and frequently palpations through the overlying peritoneum will fail detection of lymph nodes with metastases. Selective lymph node dissection based on the sentinel lymph node biopsy. The sentinel lymph node is the lymph node with a direct connection to the primary tumor through a lymphatic channel and represents the lymph node or nodes most likely to first receive metastases from the primary tumor. This method could be a potential solution for the controversy in addressing lymph node dissection in low-risk endometrial carcinomas. If reliable frozen section is not available, and the decision to do a lymph node dissection is based on the Mayo criteria. A study by Abba Rustum et al. showed that there can be missed lymph node metastases in 11% of low-risk patients, and patients could be understaged in up to 25% of cases. The rationale of doing a sentinel lymph node biopsy is identifying the lymph node metastases, avoiding morbidity of a full lymph node dissection, but also may identify occult metastatic disease, not otherwise identified by a standard lymph node dissection. The technique of doing a sentinel lymph node biopsy involves the injection of blue dyes or indocyanine green, which is detectable with an infrared immunofluorescent light, and or a radioisotope around the tumor or cervix. This will then identify or map the lymph nodes with potential metastases. 
The image shows the left pelvic lymphatic trunks with endocyanine green fluorescence imaging after cervical injection of this to map the endometrial carcinoma. The sentinel lymph node is located in the medial aspect of the iliac vessels and the secondary node just lateral to the external iliac vessels. Professor Al Snyman from the University of Pretoria examined the efficacy of sentinel lymph node biopsy and the algorithm used by Aberystwyth et al. in assessing the lymph node status in early endometrial carcinoma. This algorithm involves peritoneal evaluation and washings, a retroperitoneal evaluation with excision of mapped sentinel lymph nodes, and also removal of any other suspicious lymph nodes. If no sentinel lymph nodes were mapped, a side-specific lymph node dissection would be done, and a paraortic lymph node dissection at discretion of the surgeon. This was shown to be a feasible option in a South African setting, with 100% sensitivity, specificity, negative and positive predictive value. In summary, in early endometrial carcinoma, there is no clear global consensus regarding the best approach when it is decided to do a lymph node dissection. In current practice, factors that are used in the decision is the risk of metastases, the feasibility of surgically accessing the lymph nodes, the acceptance of the risk of lymphedema by the patient, and the acceptable rate of the use of adjuvant therapy by the patient. Patients should be counseled and shared decision making regarding the approach to lymphadenectomy should be done. The current recommendations by the ACOG and the National Cancer Network is that complete lymph node dissection and including a paraortic lymph node dissection should be done for all endometrial carcinomas, rather than merely a selective lymph node dissection. In our centre, preoperatively, selective lymph node dissection method is being followed, where high risk factors for lymph node metastasis warrants pelvic lymph node dissection. These factors are endometrioid histology grade 3, or high grade serous clear cell and undifferentiated histology, cervical involvement, or 50% or more invasion of the myometrium on ultrasound or on MRI, and the paraortic lymph node dissection is not routinely done, only in highly selective cases. Thank you.